This is slide six in our Industrial Revolution unit, um, and our third of three slides called Captains of Industry. Uh, and hopefully I'll remember the last thing on this slide to come back to that. Okay, this gets to our third of their three big industries here. We've talked about railroads, we talked about steel, and now we're going to talk about oil. Okay. Uh, and the first name here you need to know is a man named Edwin Drake. And here's Edwin Drake over here on the right. And Drake is important because without him, none of this ever happens. Right? Because Edwin Drake drilled the first successful oil well in Pennsylvania, of all places. You might think uh, oil wells, you know, Texas, Southwest, all of that. No, the first successful oil well was drilled by Edwin Drake in 1859, going way back here, pre-Civil War, 1859 in Pennsylvania. Still a lot of oil in particularly western Pennsylvania. Um, that's why we have very old historic oil companies uh, with names like Pennzoil, Pennsylvania, um, Quaker State, Pennsylvania, its nickname is the Quaker State, okay, and their logo is a Liberty Bell. Um, that's why we have oil companies named that, because this is where the oil industry begins, um, in Pennsylvania. Right? So Drake discovers it, but really Rockefeller, our old friend Rockefeller here of the trusts, uh, John D. Rockefeller, and there you see his picture, right there, there's Drake, uh, this is Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller would be the big name in the oil industry. Um, now, Rockefeller finds uses for oil. He refines it. He changes it. When oil comes straight out of the ground, it's basically useless. Okay, you have to change it into a useful form. Refine it. That's why you have oil refineries. Okay? Um, one of the first big uses for oil was uh, as kerosene. Kerosene was a byproduct of oil. When you refined oil, one of the things that's left over, you take out of it, is kerosene. Uh, and kerosene was used in lamps. Okay? This is pre-electricity days here, um, pre-light bulb and all that. Um, kerosene lamps were what you used to light your home with. Okay? Um, before that, you used whale fat in your lamps. Now, whale fat, it's exactly that. It's whale blubber boiled down. Problem with whale fat was that, two, one, it, it was very expensive uh, to get, and two, it was particularly harmful to the whale, as you had to kill the whale in order to get the fat. Um, Kerosene will be much more plentiful and therefore much cheaper uh, than whale fat. And um, more people then have access to it. Eventually, though, the light bulb will replace kerosene. And it seems oil is going away. No. It is at that point that um, gasoline is discovered. Right? Um, the internal combustion engine, uh, by 1900, uh, the internal combustion engine has been invented, and it's running on gasoline. So, other than just as a lubricant for machinery, which is the first big use for oil, uh, kerosene, then gasoline. Okay? Now, it's Rockefeller that figures all this out. Rockefeller owns all these oil refineries. Okay? Um, he founded a company called Standard Oil. That He chooses the name purposely, that his oil sets the standard uh, against which all others should be judged and so forth. Right? By, he founded Standard Oil in 1870. In just seven years, by 1877, Rockefeller controlled 95% of all the oil refineries in the country. 95%. So there's a really, really, really good chance if you're buying oil uh, in the United States, you're buying it from John D. Rockefeller. Um, now, the problem is uh, a couple here. Right? 
Um, he's running this as a trust. Okay, he he convinces all the other oil companies around to let him run them as part of Standard Oil, okay? um, which becomes a monopoly when you have almost total or total control of an industry. That is a monopoly, okay? and it's also another business tactic called horizontal integration. Okay? And there you see the big, big yellow box. Now let's contrast this with Carnegie's vertical integration. Remember in vertical integration you own part of each step in the process. In horizontal integration okay, you own all of one step. So if you think of these as oil refineries, changing the oil into a usable form, you have Rockefeller owning oil, 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 and on to seeming infinity. Okay? Rockefeller doesn't worry about the drilling of it, the shipping of it, and all of that. He'll buy oil from a company straight out of the ground. A company wants to run an oil drilling rig. That's fine. He'll buy oil from them. It's cheap because you can't use it for anything until it's turned into something. So Rockefeller, instead of owning part of each step, you know, like he doesn't own the oil field, the oil refinery, railroad company, shipping company, all that. he just concentrates on the oil refineries. Now, whereas vertical integration is legal, horizontal integration is going to become illegal because this is going to become a monopoly. Okay? Now, eventually, Rockefeller will branch out. He will start buying oil drilling companies. He will buy railroad companies and all that, much like Carnegie did. Um, but he will create a monopoly. And monopolies are bad for two reasons. And you got to know these. Quality and price. Because if you're the only game in town, if you are the only person they can get oil from, you can sell as crappy a product as you want. You can sell as bad a oil as you want to. And you can charge as much as you want for it. Because if you need oil, and all businessmen do, here, running factories, you got to have oil, you got to buy it from Rockefeller. Monopolies are bad for two reasons. Quality and price. Now, Rockefeller actually produced a quality product. His oil was very good. And he charged a fair price for it. But the government decides that you won't all be always be able to count on the monopoly owner to do that. So the government passes what's called the Sherman Antitrust Act. Outlawing trusts. The Sherman Antitrust Act. Act. This is 1890. Now, the, it, the problem with the Sherman Antitrust Act is it doesn't distinguish between good trusts and bad trusts. Rockefeller had a good company. He sold a good product at a fair price, but it was a monopoly. And the government says all monopolies are bad. Now, it's a terribly written law. Uh, there's lots of loopholes. There's lots of ways to get around it. Uh, but everything has to start somewhere. And this is where the government's anti-monopoly efforts begin. Okay? Um, they'll go after lots of companies, including Standard Oil. But they won't get to it for a little bit yet. Who they do get to, the first monopoly that's broken up by the government is... Northern Securities Railroad, owned by our old friend J.P. Morgan, the banker guy who bought out Carnegie, right? He owns the Northern Securities Railroad. Uh, it basically had a monopoly on railroad in the northern part of the United States. If you want to take a railroad anywhere, you had to take Morgan's, and he could charge whatever he wanted to, and he did. Uh, that's how he makes a lot of money. So the first monopoly that gets up is uh, broken up, sorry, is the Northern Securities Railroad. Okay. Now, um, as I said, let's, let's get back to the last thing here. 
this captains of industry. You've noticed the last three slides have all been called that, but it's captains of industry with three question marks. That's because, depending on where you stand, these men that we've been talking about, Morgan, uh, Carnegie, Ford, Rockefeller, Edison, all of them, these big tycoons here, some people see them as captains of industry, driving the industry of America, making America the most powerful economic country in the world. Others see them as robber barons, right? stealing from the poor, running small businesses out of business, destroying them to take over their resources. So are these men captains of industry or are they robber barons? It really depends on your perspective and it's up to you to decide.